Hello guys, this is Econ TV and I am Moi Chan Chat Sang, your host for today. And today with me, I have Freddy D Singh. He is one of the most decorated Manipur footballers. He was the captain of the Indian national team. He played for clubs like East Bengal, Monbogon and a host of other uh, big I-League clubs and ISL which get a blasters as well. He recently managed Neroka FC and won the CC meet Jurachan meet with him. And he is now the technical director of Classic Football Academy. And uh, uh, another guest we have here, Moisami Vishum. He is the most decorated Sangal footballer that we've had. And I don't think there's a title that he hasn't won at the national level except for the Santos Trophy, which sadly has eluded him. And uh, unfortunately, he was unable to play in the ISL, but the legacy he has left behind has been. Uh, massive. So uh, I have a question for you guys. Um, okay, so the two of you guys started playing football when uh, football in India didn't have the economic or the financial, uh, you know, backing from most investors, and was not as glamorous as it is today with the TV, social media, and everything. So how difficult was it back then? It was not difficult at all. Mm -hmm. We played football because we okay. love football. As a Manipuri kid, you know, football is the first thing. You know, whenever when we were in school, we play before the school, we play after the school, and football was everywhere. Just that it, it was not as hype up as this right now. Okay. You know, right now, if you play one good match, you are the famous player or sort of thing. But in our days, yes, in East Bengal, you know, 130,000 people, 130,000 people were coming and watching the match. And those were the days. Just that the social media was not great, great as it is now, but uh, we, we had some good times as well. Do you think, um, I'm just going to ask this question to Darren, do you think, uh, you know, uh, social media has this, you know, a uh, way of uh, glorifying a player for a certain match, a certain goal, and then, you know, taking him all down, pulling him down, you know, like criticizing him again for, you know, performance that's not up to the level that he often plays. So do you think, like, social media is you know has a big role to play in you know destroying as well as making players like yeah, and it, you it, know, affecting the mentality of the players it, it is good and bad both yeah. if you play a good match you know your people will will, will will be crazy about you but if you don't play a good match you know you are down there so to keep up that players have to prove every single day if you don't play well you're out because there will be many players so through social media we, we can see a lot of other players as well so the, it's more competitive now I feel okay me like what are your thoughts like how how difficult was it back then like was it not difficult at all like Darren Didi here says or like was it more difficult for you coming from a conservative society that looks at football as something as a hobby and not as a profession for me it's very difficult when I, when I start playing football because my parents did not support me and even the society that I live they don't know the uh, importance of soccer football that's why for me to play this professional football uh, i have to hide and start my practice <laughs> i never go out telling my parents that i'm going for practice but i have to go out myself hiding from them but as uh, brother anity say that i love football for the love of the game i i did my best try my best wherever i get the chance i want to play I go out and then uh, make sure that I enjoy the uh, match. And thanks to your perseverance, your dedication, your hard work, now you, like, I think it's because of you and some of the other players from our community that has, you know, really shown in football that football can be a really good profession as well. And that's why I believe we're seeing a shift, you know, from where the parents were really, you know, conservative about sending out their kids out to play football to where, you know, parents are more supportive of their kids playing football. Do you think that's true? Like. In both of you, right? See, well, like Basume said, you know, he had a tough start, you know, that's mm -hmm. for everyone because how, many, how much money we used to earn then. Yeah. It was difficult for the family, you know, playing football, they think that we cannot live a good life. And like now, now, you know, everyone knows that if you play good football, you can, you can earn well, you can have a good life. So parents are a little easier towards mm -hmm. the, their kids, you know, they want uh, their kids to play football. Now we see even in Bastum is also running an academy. There are so many young players, you know, showing interest, coming to train. We went here, we are running an academy, Classic Football Academy, 450 kids. In our days, we didn't have a single academy. 
So Tata Football Academy and Sports Authority of India, those two were the only academy and how many kids will fit in. Exactly. And then how much money uh, you will make playing football. And when I started, 75,000 in 1996, 75,000 for the whole year. Okay. And now, even a 17-year-old kid will, will make about 20, 25 lakhs if he's good and he is going to stay in five star for six months. Everything has been taken care of. Of course, yes, in TFA, I was uh, lucky. There were many players who, are, who were better than me, but I, I got lucky and I got selected in Sports Authority of India and Sai. But TFA has given us everything. But there were so many players in, 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 in Manipur, a young who are 12, 13, 14, but they didn't have academy to, to get into. But now, not only in, in, in Bangalore or not only in Punjab or not only in, in Goa, now we have our own academy. It's just that this academy has to be better, but we are going in the right way and it will become better. Okay. Yeah, like you have said, uh, it was hard in your time because there was only like, a few academies that were you know, really pursuing football back then. And like you said, you might have been lucky, but I believe it was um, uh, a matter of you know, talent and hard work combined together that led you to where you were. Um, do you feel like uh, with the event of Crossroads Football and all the academies coming up, there is a better pathway, a more defined path for kids, you know, playing football to, you know, to get into professional f uh, football. Yeah, I think this is our job. Like Vasu, me, we have Goramangi, we, we had uh, many other players, Suru Kumar. They all have started an academy, not the residential academy, but where kids can come in the morning and train. So they are sharing the experience. It is very important. Now we have coaching course. All the ex-players. Good footballers can't be a good coach, but then you have to, if you want to be a coach, you have to go through this coaching course and you get an A license, you get B license, you get C license, whatever license it is. When, you, when we go through that and, and, and we come out of that and we share our own experience, whatever, for 19 years we have played, we have played under so many good coaches and we will be sharing and we are sharing right now, even, even he's doing the same thing. We, with so many in Ukul and we are doing here in Imphal and there are many uh, other outer Imphal, who, many players who have played in the highest level, they are also sharing. So, like I said, we are going in the right direction. It will take some time, but it has already started and so many kids now. If you go to uh, Reliance, if you go to BFFC, if you go uh, to Chandigarh, uh, Round Some Glass, class. there are mm -hmm. so many Manipuri players. Exactly. But, but now we have so many players who are here as well. So we have to give a chance, we have to platform. Why everyone has to go out? Unlike our days, we had to go out because we didn't have good coaches, we didn't have good academy. Now we have started having our own academy, just that we need few residential, so that you know we all the players from Manipur are all from humble background. Yeah. They don't even have money to, to come, uh, spend 40 rupees from their family to come, uh, to pay for the travel. So it is very difficult. So if we can have few residential academy, Manipur, you know, with all these, uh, players who have played in highest level come back and started coaching, I think we can do great. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Me, like any thoughts on your, you know, like any thoughts from your sides regarding the grassroots football development in the crew that's happening? Of course, you're one of the technical titles leading Ukrul FC and you're the you know, grassroots leader, I believe, for Ukrul FC Academy as well. So, like what positives have you seen, you know, since coming back from your playing days and, you know, now training these kids? comparing themselves to you when you were at that age, like how, you know, how much of, uh, you know, um, advantage they have? I would say grassroots is the most important thing for a footballer. And also to groom footballer, we have to start with the uh, uh, grassroots coaching. Because, yeah, compare, you see, Indian has started taking uh, this thing, serious not on grassroots development. Why? Because uh, if we want to improve football, if we want to improve quality football, or if we want to Im compete in a highest level, uh, we have to start with the grassroots. We cannot go out and play big matches without uh, the knowledge of basic game, basic, basic knowledge <coughs> of football. That's why we have to start with basic grassroots uh, coaching, grassroots development course, and all this in our district. Uh, as I know that we have already started. In Ukru, there is three, four Academy academies, special. club run by the club. club. So, um, comparing to comparing to the olden days, now it's 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 improving. It's improving, 
and I see that I can see that there is changes coming coming on. Okay. That's for sure. Tara, did you were there when Tampa Football Players Association uh, organized their first award night like last? Mm -hmm. I think it was in May. June? Yeah, yeah, May. May. So like, uh, how how impressed are you with the football you know development that's happening in the crew? Talk us a little bit about football development in the crew and what you've seen so far and the potential that has that the crew has. And I know that Basum and a few other academies, the work they have, they are putting into. And I was really impressed uh, the way uh, they have organized the place at what night. Manipur was big, not anymore. Manipur was a yeah. was really big in Indian football. We used to have seven players, so eight players in the national now team. Now we have two. Mizoram. Yeah. Now we are after Mizoram. Mizoram has been doing great for the last eight years. Now we have we are behind them. Maybe we have, we have started losing to Arunachal. We have started losing to lot many others northeast states, that's and that's not a good a sign. But as yeah, as we keep mistake. working right now, the way we have been working, it will take two three years. Then we will be back again. But if we continue doing that, coming back to the organization of that award night, really really impressive. In even Manipur, we didn't have a, a place award night. Forget about place award night. We don't have our association award night. So but that now after that I went to we had our award uh, ceremony in Sikkim. Sikkim yeah, just uh, CM, yeah, the chief minister of the new CM, the chief minister of Sikkim and governor, that they have sponsored us and it was it was nice. Like 15, 10, 15 thousand turning up for the match and there were many players who have who had to cut short their holiday and, and to come and play. It was you know and thanks to all the players and to the to the chief minister and the governor for, for helping us. And it was nice and cool also, so uh, th that's a good start, you know. Once you start, the dress will follow. I forgot one thing while I was introducing these guys to you. So, Dharanidhi is the president of the Football Players Association of India and Marisa Me, he is the president of the Tanko Footballers Association. So, big, big uh, presidents here, yeah. big, big, uh, mm -hmm. you know, workers mm -hmm. towards football development in Manipur and in India as well. Um, Dharanidhi, um, you know, talk to us about, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, what prospect, uh, you know, Crossroad kids have after the training. See, uh, we can have as many Crossroad academies here, as many Crossroad centers here, but what if they don't, they're not given a chance to perform? What if they're not given a platform to, you know, showcase all they've been doing in the trainings and everything? So how can we address that? That's what the, the state association, the district association, uh, an uh, ex-player like us have to create a platform for these young kids who are 10, 15, 14, 12. If they don't play, at the, you train for 3, 4 days, 5 days. At the end of the week, you need to play a match. Mm -hmm. Without, when you play a match, that's where they are going to learn to have that winning mentality. And if you lose, how you come back? You know, all the grassroots players, or, or 300, 400,000, they are not going to become the best footballers. But then it will teach you the winning mentality. And the best one from there will will go to, to to play the best in India. So to create a platform, it's all our duty, all getting together, the ex members, ex players, the state association, this district association. It's our big duty to organize. Otherwise, you can do all the grassroots, but if they don't play, uh, exactly. uh, they will not make it big. So uh, one positive thing that's been coming out of the crew grassroots is. I believe we have had three tournaments so far, three baby league tournaments so far. So one was for under nine, organized by UFC under uh, my recent me. The other was under twelve, and just recently UFC participated in the under twelve uh, football league, uh, organized by Upal Basic Soccer Foundation, which sadly UFC came second. But it's not the you know rankings, it's not the titles that matters as of now for this kids. It's you know getting the playing time and everything. So. Uh, I'm me, have you seen an improvement in your kids? Like, and you know, do you believe players grow as, uh, you know, these kids grow as players once they participate in the tournament, you know, outside of their grassroots training, like normal day to day training? Like, do they grow as players if they participate in the tournament and do they become better players that way? I can see a lot of players, it means a young player, these uh, grassroots players of ours. They improve. They are improving a lot. From the first, from the moment we start, uh, you know, from there till today, their improve. Their improvement is mm. huge. I can, I can, I can see with my own eyes. The, the first day they arrive in the academy, 
they don't know how to kick, they don't know how to pass the ball, they don't know how to control the ball, even they don't know how to run properly. But today, comparing the first day and the today, they are improving a lot. I can see the future is bright because there is a lot of talent in it. In the, we, we, we have to give them the knowledge how to play and we have to encourage them, give the confidence to perform or not only in the this thing, not only in the practice, but like we participate in the tournament and then we came first in the champion and then this time uh, we came with runners up. But winning or winning a tournament is not uh, is not is not our main concern. What we do is we have to nurture the kids. We have to give them platform and we have to give time to grow them as a better player. That's what we are doing right now. Okay. I think this, this interview is getting a little stiff, so just to let an afterward, Diane, talk to us about the most embarrassing moment you had as a footballer, like in your professional career. The most embarrassing moment yeah. when you miss a, when you miss a <laughs> goal. <laughs> That's the most embarrassing moment when you're kicking a corner kick and it goes out. And okay. you, you don't have a place to hide because there is like 70,000, 80,000 people. So, so every miss pass is an embarrassing moment. But then we footballers, we just get on quickly. You know, we try if we do something bad, and we, we try and do something good so that it can cover up. But exactly. many embarrassing moments. Yes. It's not about dwelling on the mistakes, but yeah. rather than yeah, we, we keep going. going. Yeah, embarrassing yeah. moments, but we keep going. <laughs> Amazing. Do you have any you know particular moment that you, you still remember to this day? You know. I forgot the match, but like rather than this say open goal chances. <laughs> 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 yeah. See yeah. that that's that's the most embarrassing moment for me. Okay, so. Uh, from that, the best moment you've had so far, you know, in your professional playing career and in your coaching career as well. Yeah, coaching. Uh, I'm still new. You know, I'm yeah. like, I've been uh, assistant coach for Pune City FC for two years, and then I did with Neroba. Yeah. Now I'm working as a technical director for for Classic Football Academy. Uh, but yes, good moments. Uh, you know, when you started as a, I started as an 11 year old kid. You know, getting a selection in Tata Football Academy was one of the best moments. So every uh, phase of life, when I was 11, when I was 17, uh, passing out from uh, Tata Football Academy and signing for Mohan Bagan was the best moment again. And from Mohan Bagan to East Bengal in 1998, when I got a chance, uh, thanks to Sukhisher, who was our national team coach, he, is a, he was the one who gave me uh, straight in, into the first 11. Uh, in, in the national team, and then I went to I went on to play for what 12 years, 11 and a half, 12 years till 2011. So in, in moments are, are many, but then okay. playing for six years in East Bengal and six years in Mohan Bagan, and then when Bob Houghton came, that's when we started learning the right football. So of course, thanks to uh, my coach when I was 11, who selected me, uh, Ranjan Chaudhary. Uh, thanks to um, Sukhisar when, when he gave me a chance to play for the national team. Thanks to Bob, in 2006, when we are already uh, when we already played for 10 years uh, in in the Indian National League, he came in and then he gave us a new life. He have taught us how to play a, a real football. He is the one who took Malmo to everyone knows that to go to took Malmo to Champions League final, okay. and he took China to World Cup. So Bob uh, is is the best for me. So so playing under him for six years was the best moment and. Uh, Scoring a goal in Nehru Cup was also a good moment, and then scoring or uh, assisting a goal in uh, in Asia Cup was was one of the. We don't have we didn't have VAR system. It hit the bar, went in, it came out. <laughs> Sunil had in. It went to Sunil <laughs> and my brother. So, well, but uh, the, those moments are, are great, and I always cherish. Them. But now I'm working as a coach, so I want the players to play better than what we have played. That's why I'm working hard every day. I believe you missed out on you know. One moment that I consider very big, mm -hmm. the equalizing uh, free kick against Syria, right? In yeah. the uh, yeah. Nero Cup. Yeah. But Syria, you know, to play against Syria and to play Bahrain to, to score a, a goal like that was, was one of the best moments. Mm -hmm. And right after that, we went, we went on to play Bahrain in Asia Cup. Okay. But Asia Cup is yeah, much Asia bigger than Nero Cup. You know? And then even we lost. 5-2, but you scored two goals against Bahrain, who almost qualified for the World Cup twice. It's a was, thing. Was, uh, always, as a team, uh, as an individual, I will always remember that. Okay. 
What about you, my son? Any particular moment that you will always cherish? Not one, two, three, maybe. Playing for Indian national team. Yeah, that's that's uh, a dream of every footballer, yes. Yes, playing for Indian national team and playing by Chung Budia farewell match against Bayern oh, Munich. Bayern. So. And uh, and also the Mohan Bagan East Bengal uh, Federation Cup final in 2010. Yeah, we are yeah, scoring the winning goal, goal in 54 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. What a way to introduce himself to the East Bengal fans! Yeah. Right after his sign, he scored in the 57 to 54 minute in the final and clinched the Federation Cup for there East Bengal. There is nothing <laughs> like scoring when you East Bengal and Mohan Bagan play. It's like yeah. the <laughs> biggest <laughs> story. One like people watching. Manipur, all due respect, they come Manipur football fanatic, yes, mm -hmm. but 15, 20,000. Yes. When but one lakh people watching, yeah. and if he can score, and if he scored, right? And that's uh, the feeling but which you'll never get, will yeah. yeah. never get again. Though. One of the yeah. best yeah. feeling maybe in Indian football yeah. Yeah. until now, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've talked a lot about grassroots development, but one thing that's, you know, the underlying problem in Manipur, I feel, is, you know, the proper infrastructure. And for the valley, for Imphal, I believe it's a little bit better. But in a pool, like if you look at it, there's only two proper grounds, and the grounds, it's terrible. The condition is terrible. It's sandy, mm -hmm. and there's potholes, waters everywhere. Sometimes you can even see the, uh, that poles inside the potholes, and even tire tracks everywhere. People come inside the ground and learn how to drive. So, you know. How can we improve the conditions of the ground, and how does it, you know, like how does the bad condition of the ground affect the development of this grassroots kids? My son, in your opinion, there. Uh, if we want to develop football, <coughs> first thing, proper infrastructure is a must. We need to have a, a good infrastructure in order to develop good football, because without good playing surface, players don't get proper training that we, we want to give them also. So like uh, like in Ukrul, even, even we want to give them uh, this thing, basic knowledge, push pass and all these things, but the condition of the ground, you know, everywhere, muddy. So it's not possible for them to train, to give them a good training. So they're more concerned about the condition of the ground rather than doing the basics of the game. So that's the problem. They, yes, they forget yes. playing football and they're more worried about the ground. Because the ground condition is so bad, they have to know where the uh, puddle is, they have to know where the mud is. And they, they're trying to you know get the ball across that instead of just passing the ball you know, to the teammates. So I believe that that is a very bad, uh, great disadvantage for uh, I can see that that's uh, the biggest problem everywhere. Mm. If you go to Africa, you will never get a good ground. There are many good grounds. To educate in our state, what I feel is to educate the community. Mm -hmm. Once you educate the community, they will not drive a car inside the ground. Yeah. So educating the community is the, is the main problem. Yes, while waiting to, to educate the community, we can't stop playing football, right? Mm. We have to play football in that bad ground. I know it's bad. But, but then we still have to go on because kids, we, we have to learn, they have to know how to play. Okay, our duty is to give the best ground, educate the community. While doing that, let the kids play at least, give them a platform in that background and let them play. And then in future, in another maybe a few 10 years, 5, 10 years down the line, we will get. For example, in Manipur, in our days, look at the stadium in, uh, in uh, Komalampa. 19 years career, we have never played in such good ground. In Manipur, of course, we hardly play in Manipur because uh, even for Santos Trophy, I played only once for Manipur, but three times for Bank Bengal. So, so we hardly used to come here and play. Never played. Any. But one or two matches uh, or three matches in, uh, in, in Kumala Park for, for Santos Trophy, we never had that ground. So it's because of, 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 of Neroka, the, the director, Nawa, he have started maintaining the ground. You started thinking, that, oh, if we have good ground, the players can play better. Yeah. So we see that. So that, that's the education, of, that's the example he has shown to many. And that's how he has started his own football ground, which is 15 minutes away from here, uh, Loitam. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best ground in, in Manipur. Oh, yes, so training ground yeah, of new yeah. Yeah. So now if you go uh, Kongman, uh, where Kago is training, mm -hmm. Goromangi and Karans, 
you have half good ground. So slowly, slowly things are changed. Now you go like in Thavi, people have started cutting the grass, maintaining the ground. So now slowly, slowly it's coming up. We are in the right direction. While waiting for that, we have to let the kids play. You know, if you, I, like I said, I give an example of Brazil, Brazil or Latin America. They don't have money. They're also playing in a muddy ground. This, but they're still becoming, I mean, they're still are the, one of the best, right? Or, or European getting the best ground since they were five, six, seven. But they're still not the world champion, no? Look at Africa. But this is one side. But on the other side, we association, or, or the individuals, or the community, society, has to learn and, and, and think that in football ground you don't drive in football. That, that's not a place where you learn driving. Or I think the, the cow is a big problem. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is, right. So then we have to, education is the key first and the rest will follow us. <laughs> That's, I don't think we need to say anything more other than that. Education is the most important thing. Anything. So um, I think we can learn a lot from Mizoram in terms of community support and everything. But um, for Manipur, for the Valley at least, for Imphal at least, I believe investors are starting to invest in football. But what's you know what about you know hill districts like Akrul? I believe Turachampur also it's mm. changing. The scene is changing. I mm. think they recently had their first six aside turf. Mm. But in Akrul, you know this change has you know hasn't been uh, you know it has been really slow and it looks like it's not really coming. Uh, where do you think the community? What do you think the community can do about this? And if we were to you know rope in potential investors like. What do you think will be our you know, unique selling points to these investors to invest in football in the crew? For investors, they want to see the interest. You know, how many people are turning up for a match, how many people are wanting to see a match. For them, it's all about names. Right? Yeah. That's why they're investing. So to, to get that investor, you have, the, you have to show the interest. We have yeah. to have a league. You have to have a league in spite of having a fan background, culture. fan culture. Exactly. And then you have to, to interact with the community kids. A lot and with the families, not only with the kids, we have to let the family know that they're playing football, that, that we can earn a good living, and then we have to do a lot of community work. I feel, and that's how you, you, you bring everyone together, and then only the investor will come in. And transport is a big problem again. Mm -hmm. So, do you think about something in the past few years? It has been a little bit, you know, stagnant, you know, and not doing the things they're supposed to do. Shiri Cup is no more. Shiri Lili Cup is no more. Gazitmi Cup is Tor Trophy is no more. So, in spite of all this, football seems to be growing slowly. That means, do you think, you know, the community is slowly, you know, taking up the patent? Do you think the community is slowly taking up the responsibility for the growth of football in our district instead of, you know, relying on the association, on the sports association? And how positive is that? Do you think that's the truth? You know, do you think that, uh, the community is finally taking up responsibility instead of the associations? Yes, yes, really. In spite of, uh, in spite of Utsa not functioning properly in a food district, uh, the main problem is that uh, first of all we have to set up a football, different football association. Ukru district is a Ukru district sports association, but we don't have football football association. This Ukru District Sports Association uh, concentrate in all sp manner of sports. But if we want to improve football, I think we have to have a separate association. Football association. Yeah. Ukru District Football Association. Yeah. Those people will concentrate only on football, not other, not other sports. So that, so that uh, means you, uh, we can improve football. Because th those people think only about football, how to improve and how to have a good uh, platform for the younger generation, how to improve the infrastructure and all these things we can do by this uh, introducing a football association. And also the, this thing, uh, our society is taking interest or keen interest on supporting on football, means the uh, uh, community is supporting. I can see a lot of people coming to see the match, turn up for the match. Even you see the recently concluded the baby league. Mm -hmm. Even of the parents and all the supporters turn up for the match in the final, or not uh, even in the league also they turn up. So uh, the community is 
supporting. They, they are taking their responsibility to clean our district. And I really think that it is everyone is it is everyone's duty to to contribute in developing football. Mm -hmm. Not we cannot concentrate only on Utsa, not blaming they are not yeah. functioning. Uh, not blaming uh, district sports association. But everyone contribution is needed in developing football in our district. That's what I feel. Yeah. No, a little bit from every individual. Mm -hmm. No one in this room, you know, knows better about the fan culture in Bengal than you guys. And it came from, you know, generations of playing football, you know, league and you know, building that fan culture it took a lot of years, took you know a lot of time. And they are where they are now because of all that the footballs they've played and the league and everything that has happened. You know, led to the you know formation of that fan culture, the rivalry between these teams, and uh, we believe in Ukrul as well. If uh, football association do come up and organize a district league, you know, for three, four months in a year, do you think then the fan culture will start uh, slowly start to develop, and do you think then the community will really, really start to you know contribute towards football, even investing towards community clubs as well, like we've seen in Mizoram. So obviously, obviously, if we if we have a league, league tournament in our district, if we have uh, if we if we organize good tournament, and if we have a good sports team, people will sh show interest. People will come and support because everyone loves football in crew. They 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 love football. I know that. Uh, but the thing is that we don't organize good tournament. We don't organize. A district league. There is no way that these people will come and support us because there is no uh, nothing. There is no tournament. There is no uh, league. This is the problem that we cannot build without playing matches. How can people come and support us? Practicing is not no no not the thing that they will come for. But if we, if we have thirty matches like East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, in Kolkata. Obviously, in a crew, if we have these therapy matches in a crew, people will come and support because they because they love football because they like football, and they these young people they die for football. That's what I feel. Yes, we have to we have to have a good league system and good tournament in our district. Talking about the league system, it it is important. You know, when you have a tournament, you finish in fifteen days. Yeah. People, people have got too many, mm -hmm. you know, they have many work to do and they can't come for 15 days in a row. If you have a weekends. league for which, which can run for five, six months and only on weekends, weekends exactly. that's the best time, right? Mm -hmm. People going to office, Saturday, Sunday, they're free, families, minimum with minimum budget, if you can run, play only on weekends for four months, five months, that's the key. If you can do that, uh, that's then the organization has to work more. But with a minimum budget, you know, no player are, are going going to ask for a lakh or two mm -hmm. or three, right? Mm -hmm. So with all these young players, if you don't have a senior team, do it for fifteen years old, do it for sixteen years old, where they can play only on Saturdays for five six months. You will see the development and you will see the fan following also. Mm -hmm. And every individual have to do a bit like I said, but creating not a tournament but for a league for which can only play on uh, Saturday and Sunday on weekends, and which can run for five, five months. months yeah. that, that's that will only help develop football and, and this community that we are the whole thing we are talking about. It's fan culture. Mm. Well, the, uh, we're seeing in the Indian, you know, in the Indian top tier right now the clash between the ISL and the I League. Mm. And how much do you think this is uh, this hardening factor for you know young budding clubs, young you know budding you know uh, individuals who are really who really wants to develop football in India and they're trying to set up a new club but they're disheartened by what they're seeing right now and how long do you think it will take to resolve the you know clash between the ISL and the IDIC? So that it has been going on for the last few years right? and, and all I want to see is that we're running one league for 2022 teams Second. and promotion and relegation. This is what we have been <coughs> waiting for. Uh, one league is the best, not ISL, not I League. You know. Bring all things together, relegation, promotion, relegation. So if we, the sooner, the sooner they do, the better for the players and, and for the club officials. Yeah. So um, 
Karen, do, do you have anything that you want to say to you know, young budding footballers from Macro and what they should do to you know, to reach the standard of football, you know, footballing career? Yeah, I cool is uh, I have visited three times and it, I think it's beautiful. People are nice, and I have a friend, uh, Basum, who, who is younger to me, and I have got my senior uh, Soso, who was with me playing in East Bengal. He was so playing sorry, in sorry, sorry. sorry, guys. I mean, can we uh, repeat this again? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, the sound is not okay. It's uh, rolling. <coughs> so, Darindi, um we've talked a lot about grassroots football, about professional football, and what would be your message to you know young kids that are taking up, you know, that are really interested in making it as a professional footballer? What would be your your message to them? The players, I can see a lot of interest in the players, and there are a lot of young kids who who, who wants to um, get big in India, and I think they will they they will be like the kids are working hard. We all have to give a platform, but then cool they have their pioneers, so so Vasum, they can only follow. But there are many so so, and and Vasums who, and they all should help these young kids to play the best football. And then just keep going and you know we are going the right direction i'm sure you know they are playing in a muddy ground but soon it, it will change you know if not maybe in few months you know here it will change and they just keep trying and now the the ex players that they're they are working hard to get a platform and then i'm sure you know in a few years to come it will get better and if, if you keep working you know you never know where, where it will reach so just keep working and cool is a place where, where I really like to visit again. I've visited thrice and people are nice, so I would, I would love to. <laughs> and Wilson, what about you? What would be your message for these kids? For these kids you're training, for these kids that your kids are competing against? <laughs> uh, if you want to be success, the discipline, first discipline, you have to be good in discipline. Without discipline, it's difficult everywhere. So hard work, work hard, hard work, perseverance, and then you have to dream mm -hmm. that you can make it Absolutely. one day. Absolutely, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, if, if you keep believing, mm -hmm. look at see where I'm, I'm lucky where where just because TFA become a better player, but look at so so how tough it was for him. Look at Baichu. They were all diamond in the roughs. Yeah, yeah, and Sunil have never went to the academy. Mm -hmm. From school, he, he exactly. came straight to Mohan Bagan when I was the captain. Mm -hmm. So all the big players, they didn't have to go to academy. So if you keep believing, if you keep working, you will get it. You know, it's not only the academy players we play football. Exactly. There are many, you know, you have to work as an individual. You have to keep believing in yourself that you can be great someday. So there you have it from two of the most uh, integrated Manipur footballers of all time. And I believe that's how we're gonna wrap up today. Thank you so much, guys, Thanks, for being here. It was great having you here. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.